creating a fully 3D stealth game on iOS certainly sounds like a challenging task. Imagine playing a game like Thief or Splinter Cell with touch controls as your only tool. Though it isn't an appealing proposition on paper, Camouflage Games has not only found a way to make stealth work, they've also created an intriguing, if unoriginal, world and story that do an excellent job of drawing you in. Metamorphosis is the second episode of Republic's five-episode season, and manages to significantly improve upon its predecessor's shortcomings. The game stars Hope, a prisoner trapped in a dystopian and totalitarian society who desperately seeks freedom. Her fascist overlord has placed cameras in seemingly every corner to watch over the society he commands. He believes in order and protection through absolute control. I am not a filter for your ideas, child. I am your shield. Although Episode 1 effectively introduces you to Republic's cold Orwellian world, it doesn't do a great job of making you care about it. The biggest issue is the episode lacks worthwhile characters, since everyone is largely undefined, like Hope, or given so little context that they feel like plot devices rather than people. Episode 2 largely corrects that error by better developing old characters and introducing sympathetic new ones. A new statue. The Librarian, for example, is nothing more than a name in Episode 1, but is given a face and voice here. The old man only wants to spread knowledge and becomes enraged that the dictator wants to silence any ideas that aren't his own. Despite the librarian's protests, he's helpless against the dictator. The character gives us a window into the world's suffering, whereas episode one only offers opposing sides. It's the right thing to do. A sense of helplessness is also conveyed through Hope. She isn't a soldier or a spy, just a former prisoner trying to get out and can't take out guards with the same efficiency as a solid snake or Sam Fisher. Hope will occasionally stumble across a taser or pepper spray that can help her in a bind, but for the most part she has to rely on your guidance to sneak her way to safety. It really packs a punch and will render its target incapacitated for the night. As a sort of enigmatic benefactor, you've hacked into Republic's security system and have the ability to freely manipulate it. This primarily means you'll hop from one security camera to the next to get a better view of the area. By bouncing around different viewpoints, you can guide Hope past any patrolling guards. To switch from one camera to the next, you have to pause the game, then manually unpause it when you want to move Hope. It's a very different approach to stealth. It seems like it was built to offer the most control. The pause-unpause system gives the player plenty of time to get their bearings as they tap and slide from one camera to the next. Since you never have to wrestle with a camera and Hope's movement at the same time, working through 3D space is far less painful in Republic than it is in other, similar iOS games that rely on virtual joysticks. Sorry to see you go. The only significant failing of this system is that it uses approximate direction rather than exact control. If you want Hope to move behind a desk, for example, you tap the desk and usually she'll walk toward it. Because you don't have complete authority over every step, expect instances where Hope will run when you want her to walk, alerting guards and sometimes heading in a completely wrong direction. These situations don't happen excessively, but it's immensely frustrating watching Hope do the exact opposite of what's intended. Thankfully, generous checkpoints minimize the annoyance of getting caught. If a guard manages to grab Hope, Hope, he'll just throw her in a cell that's usually very close to where you were heading anyway. After a quick escape, you're back on track in about a minute or so. Other than serving as a lookout for Hope, your role is similar to an investigator trying to put all the pieces in place. Fighting against a misguided and absolute authority isn't exactly unexplored territory, but the way the world is unveiled to the player is considered and intelligent. As you work your way from room to room, you'll discover newspapers, emails, and tape recordings that on their own are rather cryptic, but together hint at a much larger narrative. Man brings toxic agenda to our perfect garden. Very rarely do games show restraint, often choosing exposition dumps or monologues as means to convey information, sort of giving you everything at once. Republic asks more of the player. There are a lot more suggestions than explicit answers, and much of the enjoyment comes from arriving at your own conclusions. Thanks for getting me out of there. It's hard to say whether or not Republic will remain as fascinating as it is right now, considering there are still three episodes left, but the future looks bright. Part 1 offered a promising foundation but lacked a reason to care. This episode puts faces to everything that's happening and generally moves at a much quicker pace. We can't wait to see where Hope's quest for freedom takes her next. Books like these do not paint a rosy picture of the world, but they are not meant to. They are not paintings of the world we want. They are mirrors reflecting the world we have. <laughs>